Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Let's wait for a few more people because I've got to vent. I've got to vent. I've got, I've got a lot on my mind and uh, not holding back today. All right, so today's topic is the exciting topic of slow practice. Now, I put on my Instagram uh, story that I'm frustrated with something and I got to get it off my chest. Telling the world, all 42 people live here, hey people, I did not hear this 20 years ago. I didn't hear it. People told me, slow down, slow down, try it again, slow it down, slow it down. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I'm super pissed about that. I got 20 years of a ton of hours practice way too fast. And I'm here with a message for you. I'm guessing most of you are younger than me here. I'm 44. I just turned 44 two days ago. And uh, I'm turning a new chapter here in my life. I am slowing this shit down. <laughs> okay. So um, that's my frustration is that. Somebody told me to slow it down and I want to, and I'm going to try to relate because I want to know why, why didn't I hear this? Why didn't I hear this? So I think there were two reasons. One, um, I didn't know why I was slowing it down. I didn't know what I was looking for. It's like, cause as brass players, can you guys relate to this? That somebody says, slow it down or play the Tomasi half speed. And you're like, well, I can't make it through the first movement now. Or why don't you play the Brandenburg half speed? Can you play that half speed? No, because I'll get fried. Can you all relate to this? So people told me to slow it down. I got wasted. I beat myself up and I didn't know what I was looking for. So let me give you a few tools here. Something that maybe, maybe I hope some of you hear me today, slow it down and look for some things that I'm going to share with you. It's going to change your playing. It will absolutely make a humongous impact if you commit to this for a month. That's my challenge to you. Have a portion of your practice that is slower than you want, repeating slower than you want, more times than you want. Commit to it for a month. You're going to be blown away by what you find. All right, so let's start. I want to read you a quote by a guy named Peter Friedman. He is like a martial arts, uh, like kind of a self-defense instructor. Obviously, he's not a musician, but let me share you this quote. If you train fast all the time, you're actually slowing down your ability to learn fast. And that is counterproductive. Also, by going fast, you're promoting fear in yourself and in your training partners. How many of you want to feel a little more calm in your performances? Me. By going fast, you lose the ability of understanding what you are doing. That, that right there is the key. That's the key. When I go fast, I'm flailing. I'm looking at the end. So Peter Freeman says, by going fast, you lose the ability of understanding what you are doing. By rushing through your technique, you can't see the cool counter techniques that you can see when you're going slow. This again, this is a martial arts instructor. By going fast, you concentrate too much on the end of the technique and miss the important things like the beginning and the middle of what you're practicing. Still, I'm not really helping you all with like, what are we trying to do here? But I'll get to that. So, but that gives you an indication of like, this slow practice thing is not just a music thing. It's a martial arts thing. It's, it's in so much of what we do. And that's what my frustration was, is that I didn't slow down enough. You can tell I'm kind of an amped person. But today I spent a half hour meditating and doing breathing because I came to practice like a scatterbrain. So I recommend these two books massively, The Talent Code and The Little Book of Talent. Read this, read this, read this. If you're a musician and you want to you wanna, um, have a professional performing career, this is super helpful. Understanding the physiology of what, what happens when you practice slow. Most of you have maybe heard of this thing called myelin. Myelin is the neural pathway, and I'm sorry, it, myelin is the coding around these neural pathways and they're what help form habits. So when you do something over and over and over and over, myelin sheath is going around that particular habit, right? So like uh, when you tongue a certain way and you really like it, you stick in that moment, you do it over and over and over and over, 
the pathway of that habit, that recall of what you want to do is built around myelin sheath. And a lot of neurologists think that sort of this is like the golden egg of how human beings develop skill and um, habits. So read the talent code. I'm going to share with you five points real quick from the talent code that I think are really helpful. Number one, deep practice is built on a paradox that you want to find you want to do it right, but you want to find the edge of your abilities. Where's right and where's right at the edge where you can't do it anymore. That's what a good teacher does is finds that edge for you and helps you get a little bit closer to great while being mentally aware of what you're trying to cultivate. So when you practice slow, you're forced to notice the errors that you probably would notice when you're going faster. That's one. Two, when practicing deep, things are sort of suspended. And the goal, like I said, is to go just beyond your abilities, to reach for a little bit better, and to notice if you get it or you don't. Three, the re revolution behind myelin is that every human thought or movement is a precisely timed electrical event or electrical signal. So the more that the myelin, the more that you repeat something good, whether it's fast or slow, it builds that. And so what happens is the more myelin you get wrapped around a certain habit, it fires faster. And that's when speed starts to happen. So commit to doing it slow to where when you're playing it fast, it still feels slow. That's the physiological reality of that. And one of my favorite quotes from the talent code is struggle is not an option. It's a biological requirement. But here's the thing that's really the kicker for me. Here are two quotes. Um, I can't remember actually the, first, the name of the first one who did it. I think Chris Gecker talks about it. He says in here, in this book, it's a great book. I highly recommend it. He says that, um, oh man, I can't find it. It says that trumpet playing is 90% mental, 10% physical. How many of you have heard that? I've heard that a million times. 90% mental, 10% physical. Don't think about how it feels. But then Clark says, trumpet playing is 90% physical. You're like, well, wait a second. How can those both be right? Anybody ever kind of um, struggle with this? Well, which is it? 90% physical or is it 90% mental? The question is the context of the comment. Where are they around? Now, if you ask somebody to say, what 90% physical, what does that mean? Well, that's meaning that if you don't have these things in place, this good airflow, freedom, good response, then it's not going to, it's not going to be well. Okay. And so the other thing is 90% mental means knowing what you want to sound like. They're both true. They're both true. It's just when in the timeline. So that that's a big distinction. So I want to give you three things about, and this is the last uh, last two points around the talent code. How do you go about this? One, when you go to practice, know, take a step back, know what you want to say. That might mean listening to a recording or mentally thinking all the way through either a piece or a section that you want to practice. Taking a second to stop and think. What do I want this to sound like? Create it first. Create it first. That's one. Two, chunk it up. Okay? Meaning don't try the whole pattern. Get it into a small bite-sized thing and then slow it down. Those three things. Take a section, think about what you want, chunk it up, and then slow it down. And, and build it over time. This is the cool, exciting part. It's not how fast you can do it. It's how slow you can do it correctly. This helps develop something even more important. And this is the key distinction, a working perception of what the internal blueprints are, the shape and the rhythm of all the skills together. Does that make sense? I get super excited about this because I'm, I'm frustrated and excited because it's helped me so much in the last seven months create new distinctions that I felt like I never had the time to do. So I hope that helps you check out this book by Chris Gecker, 
check out the talent code, the little book of talent. Um, slow it down. My challenge to you, my last sign off here, my challenge is for a good chunk of your practice. Let's, let's just say a half hour of your practice daily for the next month is going to be around slow practice and see what you can build that you've never built before because you've taken the time to slow down and on faith and on faith that you say, I'm going to see what happens. You have plenty of time to rush and play it fast. Plenty of time. But let's use a lot. Okay, this will be the last thing I promise. I love sharing this stuff with you. Let's draw a little timeline, okay? Here's our timeline. Let's say, let's say you're me 20 years ago. What would I mean? I would have been 24. I just got in the Marine band, 23 years old. And let's say I'm going to be in the Marine band four years. Okay? This could be you at the beginning of your undergraduate. This could be you at the beginning of your graduate. You got four semesters. Okay? Inside each of those months or years, you know, I've got quarters or you've got weeks. And I start just thinking this out. Let's say this is four years. Four years. Okay, that's hard to read. But my point is that what if I said, hey, Tom, hey young Tom Hooten and in the Marine Band, stop flailing. Stop practicing everything too fast. Slow down for one year. Just one year. Just one year. Play everything as clean, centered, with the good sound as you possibly can for a good portion of your practice. And let's see what happens. I guarantee you I'd be a hell of a lot better trumpet player than I am right now. Guaranteed. So, and the reason I show you this is because, oh, fine. Okay, if you in the next three years you want to play really fast and miss a bunch of distinctions, that's fine. But for one year or one week of a month, if you're thinking, oh my God, I got to get a job in four years or I've got to get a job in four four quarters, there's time to slow down, okay? I hope this helps you all. I hope you all have a great weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy. If you got questions, send me a message. Um, probably best thing is to send a message to my email through my website. If you want a little chart on practicing, you can grab that on my website. There's a video that talks about how I organize my practicing. I hope you guys stay healthy, stay safe. Thanks for checking it out. Have a great weekend. Bye.